Hello everyone, Chris here. <clears throat> We're on experiment 14, um, part 2, and this is the part where we finally took our circuit from uh, part 1 and put it on a perf board. And one of the perf boards I had in my kit uh, did not have any kind of uh, copper padding on the bottom, so that's what I used. And as you'll see, uh, this is a very small piece of perf board. Uh, because I decided to try to match the book one for one for the spacing and dimensionally speaking this is a pretty tight space to work in um, if you were to like use the scale of my hand so this uh, layout is very different from the proto board but it serves the same purpose and that is a gentle oscillating uh, light. And if we look at the back, it's actually a pretty clean, there's only one joint I'm not too happy with and it's probably this side right here that I could have put a little bit more solder on that guy. That was actually the first one I did so um, I got a little bit better on the, the beading as I kind of went along. but. This was very tricky to not um, connect pieces that I didn't intend to connect. And you pretty much can't do the job uh, without a pair of these. These are those flush trim cutters where they're flat on they're flat on this edge. Let's see here. And they're curved on the other side. Because these are your savior when it comes to trimming the uh, the little loose ends on the uh, the leads of your components after you've soldered. So anyways, oh and if you're curious like this, this isn't a very clean cut job but it's about as good as I could do. It actually ended up chipping on the, uh, let's see here, see if we can see that. That outer edge on the back side ended up kind of chipping away. I wasn't really sure what to do with this and I actually just put this on my bandsaw figuring ah, I'll give that a shot but it it does chip away a little bit so um, I'm actually gonna probably look up online if there's a better way to cut these. I don't have the little a little hand saw like the book recommends. I do have like a coping saw but that I figured that would take quite a while so I guess we'll see. Um, and as you see here, we have uh, a little, I think they call these the, the headers. There's like a kind of a, a big line of basically holes with output pins that pop through the back. And these come in long strips. Now the problem I had was is the kit that I ordered uh, from Maker Shed to like that had all the parts together these little pieces while you see a little like kind of a dimple there between each uh let's see here we can get that in focus there we go so those don't actually snap really well they more like shatter <laughs> i put this in my uh my little vise and tried to like snap off a nice single section of four uh input pins and I ended up like having to try three times and, and I kept breaking off like chunks of three pins at a time and you'd have like pieces of like plastic like that were cracked on the ends like I just couldn't get a nice clean snap. Um, they look a little bit different from the uh, similar f um, female or uh, the male pin ones, the opposing ones that you could like put into these if you needed to. Those ones actually did have nice dimples to snap them more cleanly. So anyways, the purpose for this is so that we can interchange our LED and the power supply um, and be a little bit more flexible with this design. Now, having done this, um, if I really wanted this to be useful, I probably would have done a few things differently. First of all, the corners, I might not have left enough space, like, because if you're gonna put this in an enclosure, you need to kind of have it, you know, be on like a riser, right? So it doesn't like sit on the surface of the material. 
and so you need to be able to put a post in each corner. And I've left myself enough room on at least these three. I'm not 100% sure on this one because he's kind of chipped away, but that's okay. Uh, and another thing I, I thought about was like, hey, you know, this would be kind of cool if I could, maybe next time I could, you know, maybe lay the caps sideways so that they didn't take up quite so much height. Or uh, maybe, you know, instead of setting this up to have power supply coming into this, uh, these two pins here, I could, uh, you know, like get one of those, like, uh, what do you call it, the little, uh, you know, like watch battery kind of holders and like stack three of them in, uh, in series and uh, hopefully find, I guess, three volt ones that way because I need nine volts to power this guy. And according to the book, uh, the LED uh, that I'll put in here in a minute, um, on a fresh nine volt battery, this little circuit here could run it for around 50 hours. I haven't confirmed the math yet, but that's on my list to do just so I fully understand that. So that's pretty cool, 50 hours of flash time on an LED. Oh, it was such a small little cute, cute circuit. So, you know, things like this are, are, they seem very simple and not very, I don't know, not very useful, but they are. I mean, you could put this on like your bike at night when you, when you, you know, drive around, um, or rather bicycle around, <laughs> uh, you know, just uh, as a flashing light so the cars don't, uh, don't hit you, or maybe you're a jogger, things like that. So it's all about the enclosures once you start to finish up your little, your little projects, but I digress. So, uh, first thing we need is an LED. And I grabbed one of my nicer ones this time. I was getting, kind of getting tired of using one of these, or the, the crappier, like, red plastic things. So this is a clear one, but the color is actually yellow. And I need to put it this way. I can actually push that in there. There we go. I think that's good. Now it's good. And we need a power source. And so here's our 9-volt battery and the uh, lead's coming off of it. And I believe the power here, let's turn the light off. That will make this a little bit easier to observe. So bear with me a second here while I put these uh, leads in. And because we have uh, caps on this, uh, it's going to take a sec once I plug this in to charge up the caps before we start um, exceeding the put voltage. So here we go. There we go. So it's actually pretty powerful. This is a uh, nice LED. Nice bright yellow. But yeah, a very nice pulsating glow. Not as strong from the side, of course, but definitely nice and bright when you look head on. So pretty cool. So in terms of things that I learned from this project, um, number one is, is when you have this plugged in, don't just lay it down on a surface and assume it'll keep working. In fact, this, uh, this little kind of matte board thing I have on the counter here, it's uh, not supposed to be conductive, but it was still actually managing to short out the board because the uh, there must have been some path for the uh, you know electrons to jump from one of these segregated components to the other. So it was it just uh, would make the light eventually stop flashing. And it thankfully didn't damage it or anything. I just picked it up, pulled the power out, and put it back in, and it worked okay. So, anyways, that's why an enclosure with risers is important. Um, another thing you'll notice here is, is I had to throw in an extra piece of wire because the uh, leads from, just the straight leads from each component, uh, there was none left to reach this final connection. And I left a little bit of plastic, or the, the you know, the encasing of the wire on just to kind of like, hey, hey, that's a great insulator, you know, I gotta, gotta uh, run it a, far, a fair distance, so I didn't want it to make accidental contact with anything. But, hey Ella, Ella, stop, stop, I'm recording, can I? <laughs> Sorry about that guys, my dog's uh, very excited. So, um, 
Yes, I left this on, uh, and you'll notice it's a little bit melted on the ends. Well, in particular this end. And I did not touch the soldering iron to that. In fact, what happens is uh, just barely touching your soldering iron to the tip of this uh, wire generates enough heat to start melting this stuff within probably like, I don't know, maybe like five seconds. And so you have to be very careful when you're doing this work. Um, in fact, you don't even want to have one finger holding the wire there because it literally will burn your finger. It kind of did mine temporarily until I immediately just pulled away. Um, so yeah, there's some massive heat uh, involved when you're doing this stuff. Um, any other big lessons learned? Let's see. Um, it's definitely uh, tricky when you're trying to join three different leads together. And you kind of need to be real, you know, aggressive with bending them as tightly together as you can before you start to to solder them because um, otherwise you'll end up with kind of more like this was my first attempt at doing three together. Let's see if I can. And you'll see that that one is kind of arced a little. He's not really like flat to the board. And that's because I was a little hesitant to actually try to bend him and push him. Out. You know, you're, you're a little hesitant to try to push too hard on these components at first because you're not quite sure how rough you can be with them. But when you're working on this side of the board, you should be able to be pretty aggressive with the leads and once things are soldered and cooled. So definitely, uh, you know, go for force and go for, you know, and don't, don't be afraid to, to test your, uh, you know, strength of your connections afterward either, right? Because again, if they come apart when you're just mucking with them, then uh, that's not a good connection to begin with. So I hope you've enjoyed this project. Um, I did. Oh, in terms of time, <laughs> how long it took me to do this, counting like cutting the perf board and mounting the components and you know getting confused when I'm looking at them upside down and soldering and you know the couple of mistakes I kind of made along the way and corrected and stuff like that. This took like two and a half hours and I think once I get to the perf board where it's actually like uh, copper spots or maybe traces depending on what I'm working on, I think that'll be a lot easier. Um, because trying to connect the actual lead ends to each other uh, is a lot more complicated than just soldering a lead end to the uh, copper trace and then using that as a whole like you know a place to, to create common bus lines and things like that so if I had a choice and I could do this over again I would not probably choose to do this on a board like this but say la vie so see you guys in experiment 15 I haven't even looked to see what it is yet Take care.